Hello everybody, welcome to the 416. My name is Lisa Rayo and I am the director of First Step Learning Center here at Troy United Methodist Church. And I don't know about you, but um, last week's 416s were definitely a bright spot in each day. Um, I enjoyed especially the music, just feeling like we're connected, even though we can't physically be connected in the building right now. Um, is just something I really needed. So I hope you all enjoy them as much as I have. Um, also, I hope you had a chance yesterday to watch Pastor Andy's sermon. And if you haven't, I do encourage you to go back and watch it. You can find it at TroyUMC.org. Um, the name of the sermon was Jesus Came to Set Us Free. And so we're going to just dig into that a little bit more here this afternoon. Um, so Andy talked about two different types of sin yesterday. One is the sin of our own choosing, a prison that we've made for ourselves by um, choosing to indulge in sins. And the other is being imprisoned by someone else's sins. And luckily the path out of both is the same. So we're just going to talk through a little bit of that um, here this afternoon. So sin. If Jesus came to set us free and we believe in Christ, then from that moment on, everything is wonderful, coming up daisies, no worries, no troubles. Gosh, don't you wish that's how it worked? I know I do, um, but I'm sure, like many of you, I have fallen into to temptations. I've fallen into sins more time than I care to admit. And um, it's just a part of, unfortunately, a part of our human heart in this world. And we have to be able to recognize the temptations before they become sins. And we have to know what to do once we have sinned in order to restore that relationship with Christ. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. So um there are three temptations, in my opinion, three areas of temptation. One is the body, and one is the soul, and one is the spirit. So temptations of the body would be all the things that we choose to do, even though we know um, that they are not something that Christ wants us to do. For example, um, overindulging in alcohol, overindulging in food, sexual immorality, violence, um, all those things that we do with our body that we know we're not supposed to be doing would be temptations of the body. Temptations of the soul would be um, our thought life and the things that we hold above other things. Um, the world really um, pulls us away and caters to this and tries to make us conform to them and to love money and things and um, position uh, above our God. So those are all sins of our soul. Sins of the Spirit, I think, are times when the devil is trying to put a wedge between you and your God um, by creating doubt or um, anger uh, against him. So if we know what our temptations are, we can use all of that knowledge to overcome it with the help of our God. So what do we do when we realize that we've sinned and we feel the guilt? How do we restore that relationship? Or how do we um, keep the temptations from becoming sins? So the first thing that the Bible tells us is to literally flee when our flesh is warring against our body. So get away from the temptation. Don't stick around to fight it off. Get out. 2 Timothy uh, 2.22 says, Flee the evil desires of youth. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So if it's the world warring against us and it's the world warring against our soul, we can't literally flee from that because this is where we live. So if your soul is weary and you've become a worldly Christian and uh, you've lost your vision of Jesus, we are seeking fulfillment in the wrong way. So the only way to overcome this is to fall deeply in love with Jesus again. So the song says, turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. If we're feasting on Jesus and his word, then we are fulfilled by him. We find our satisfaction in him and we aren't tempted to find our satisfaction elsewhere. 
We also can't literally flee when Satan is trying to drive a wedge between us. So we have to take up the shield of faith and tell the devil to flee from us. James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. None of these things can be done on our own. And this lesson is one that I continue to learn even 30 some years after um, giving my life to Christ and becoming a Christian. I know that I don't know yet. I try to remember that my own strength cannot get me out of these temptations. I have to lean on Christ. I have to uh, lean on him to get me through those times. And it's going to be a lifelong struggle. It's not something that just goes away. So when we fall into the sin that we've been tempted by, we experience a sort of death. We lose our thrill of living. We remain under a cloud until we confess we can bounce back and start living again. And I'm just going to read um, out of Psalm 32, and I'm going to put my readers on here because I cannot see it. I'm going to read verses 3 through 5 first, and then I'll go back up and read verses 1 and 2. So, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. And I'm going to go back up to one and two. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit is no deceit. So... That's pretty self-explanatory. We have to confess. And the minute that we do, a weight is lifted off of our shoulders. Um, I'm also going to read another passage for you out of James. And I'm going to start in James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Also, I'm going to read to you 12 through 15, but this is just um, a way to show you that even in your suffering and even in your um, guilt and shame of the temptation and the sin, there is growth in that and there is restoration so uh, let me read 12 through 15. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. So don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change the shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits until of all he created. So we have to get into the habit of confessing our sin as soon as as soon as it hits our mind, and we know that we've done it. Even um, even maybe when it's just a temptation to just get it out of there and say, "Lord, I know it's in there. I don't want it." And when we are able to do that before it even becomes a sin, God rejoices in that, and um, we can only overcome those with the power of the Holy Spirit. And God just rejoices that our character is growing. So I think as we grow in Christians, and that's not to say that we never sin as we grow. Certainly we do. But hopefully we're able to stop it in the path of temptation before it grows in, into sin, the more mature Christian we become. Excuse me. We all have things that we're going to deal with throughout our life that are not good probably not ever going to go away you know we have some people have tempers or impure talk or lying um 
whatever those things are, we're always going to struggle with, but knowing them and acknowledging them <clears throat> and confessing them are the first steps to um, restoring that relationship with Christ. Because a man is a slave to whatever masters him. And as Jesus put it, I will tell the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave. Excuse me. <clears throat> Everyone who sins is a slave <coughs> to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And he said, freedom is not elusive. Belief is the first step. Jesus says it's about our choices and we must follow Jesus' ways. And when we get off the path, we have to confess it and take it back to Christ and um, feel that weight of guilt and let it go when we do confess. So I hope that um, was enlightening to you. I know that um, we all struggle with something. We all have, um, especially now at this time in our lives, we're all struggling in some way. Um, maybe even depression is... Uh, something that's weighing on you right now but Christ is the only way to get through each of these struggles whether it be a temptation or a sin or just something we're going through in our lives right now with everything that's going on loving the Lord and staying close to him and confessing to him when we are struggling with these things are the best ways and the only ways to deal with those things so I look forward to um, hearing Andy's sermons uh, over the next couple weeks, and I hope that you guys are able to enjoy um, a great holiday season and have a very blessed day. Actually, we're going to pray real quick before we go. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for everyone out there listening. I just pray that you would wrap your arms around anyone who is struggling today with a temptation or a sin or um, just struggling in life right now. I just pray that you would um, open their heart to you and just let you come in and show them that their potential is great with you, Lord, and that they will be able to uh, just do great things with you, Lord, and with your blessings. I just pray that you would um, help everyone to have a great week, and we love you so much, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys. Have a great day.